executive leaders have an opportunity like never before to step into what we call thought leadership. Welcome to Your Intended Message, the perfect place for leaders and promising professionals who want to convey the intended message for greater success. Every week, we interview experts who address the challenges and best practices to deliver your message effectively. That might be one-to-one, -one, one to few, or one to many. And perhaps the most important conversation, one to self. I'm your host, George Torok. My guest today is Chantal Broton. There's three facts you should know about Chantal. One, she is the president and CEO of the award-winning digital marketing agency, Jan Kelly. Two, during her, t during her time, she's worked with over 100 companies and she's helped them build their brand and marketing programs. Some of those organizations include Go Transit, Sobeys, Canadian Blood Services, EDC, that's the Export Development Corporation, Pan Am Games, and Petro Canada. And third fact is that before her current career as a marketing specialist, she was a ergonomist. That's not a word that we run across very often, and I made a point of looking it up, and that means that she was a specialist in ergonomics, and that means that if you experience a pain in your neck from sitting at the computer staring at it too long, well, she can help you with that as well. Chantel, welcome to your intended message. Thank you. Pleased to be here. Chantel Digital Marketing Agency. What does that mean and how is that different from what we used to know as a traditional marketing agency? Mm -hmm. Well, and, and uh, thanks for asking that question. How we would describe ourselves, George, is, is as a creative digital agency. And uh, that really is because we, we have a long and rich history as what you would describe as a full service agency. We have roots dating back to 1913. We were one of the first advertising agencies in Canada and remain one of the very few independently owned agencies today uh, in Canada. But I think what's, what's important to know is that we've worked really hard over the last number of years to become a creative digital agency. There aren't very many organizations who can say that they are both creatively led and digitally led. So we've got our strong roots in creative and in advertising and a really robust digital team. And, and that to us, we believe is the sweet spot for marketing today. So we call that whole philosophy that we use humanology and it's about leveraging the power of human insights and combining that with the power of technology and we believe that that's how marketers today will create game-changing ideas and generate breakthrough results combining human ideas and technology and which is probably not a new concept i, I suppose mankind humankind's been doing that all through history you know how do we how do we use the tools and and the the and the most recent environment for sending messages is the use of technology through uh, the internet social media is that what you mean by digital is digital does digital still include the traditional marketing channels well, I would, I would suggest that 90 to 95% of everything that we do today is digital, is happening online. So yeah, and, 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 and it's not just about the online channels, it's also about leveraging the technologies that are available to us, right? There's tons of tech, transformative technologies that are, you know, becoming more mainstream, AI, machine, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and, and all of those things are, are really enabling marketing to operate in a way that it, it hasn't been able to before. At one time, I guess it was just enough to know that you, you've got that slot for, for TV or radio or that, that space in the, in the newspapers. But now, 
the the technology not only do you need to be able to know it today but tomorrow it's going to be a new version online and you're going to have to learn to struggle with that and i suppose that that is a frustration for your clients because they don't know how to keep up and that's where you can help them yeah yeah and and it, it's a frustration but it's also an amazing opportunity so i've been doing this for a long time and once upon a time as you would recall the options were well we do some tv we'll maybe do some radio maybe maybe we'll run a print ad and if we're really crazy we'll build a website and you know the the world is just completely different now the 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 opportunities um the the the, the entire the entire environment is entirely fragmented but it also creates a ton of opportunities. And, and whereas once upon a time, you would have been frozen out of really doing marketing if you didn't have a sizable budget. Today, brands can be built and businesses can be built on shoestring budgets if you choose the right strategies and tactics and, and channels. So that's exciting. Yeah, and I do re- do remember when uh, if you were going to have a, a marketing campaign, an advertising campaign, uh, it was quite expensive, especially for television, which ever you know have to be on television. But right. now to you make use of the digital world, there are you, you need a much smaller budget. You just need to be creative, I guess. Well, it's really all about it's really all about content today, right? It's all about what is what is the content that we're producing? Are we um, developing content that people want to engage with? Because there's been a, a fundamental shift. The reason it's not about dollars anymore. And actually, if we think about marketing organizations, once upon a time, the most important thing was budget. Then you know, tools and talent. And now it's entirely flipped. It's about talent, tools, and budget is the third consideration. And, and that's because there's been a fundamental shift in, in how marketing works. And that's because of, because of this digital revolution that we've undergone. But really, the, the shift, and, and you see it in your daily life, right? You're on Facebook, you're on LinkedIn, you're on, you're on Twitter. Maybe you've even done a TikTok dance. Have you done a TikTok dance yet, George? No, no. No. Well, that's something Sounds to work scary. towards. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so what that means from a marketing perspective is that the power has shifted. There's been a shift in power from companies and brands who once controlled the flow of information, they once controlled the sales process, to now the power is really with the people, with consumers and with buyers because of the digital environment, because of all of these social networks that have, have you know, grown exponentially, they control the flow of information. They control who, what, when, where, how they engage with brands. They can tune you out. If they don't like what you're sharing and they're not interested in what you're sharing, they can tune you out. That, that wasn't possible many, many years ago. So there's this fundamental shift in power and that has changed how we function as marketers, right? Like today we have to, uh, and I don't remember who said this quote, but we have to win the internet every day as a brand. And, and so the work that's required to do that is very, very different. And it, it's interesting, the, the shift in power. At one time, if, uh, if you were a consumer and you had a complaint with, uh, with a company about a product you bought, a product or service, you might write a letter to their um, customer service department or maybe you got real bold and wrote the, write the letter to the president and you, you might or might not ever hear from them. But today, if you have a complaint with a company, you just go online, post it to, uh, to every one of your accounts and you'll get noticed. And I guess companies need to be paying attention to that. So what, how, did, how do they prepare? How do they, how do they deal with that? Yeah. And, and, they, and consumers expect to hear from you. And if, if you don't respond, you will be judged, right? The, the absence of communication is a communication in itself. So, well, so I think, yeah, I'm going to step back a little bit and talk a little bit about, you know, how, how the, this new world has changed uh, what we do as marketers. So the first thing I think that is important for us to recognize that our job was once to build awareness and affinity and persuade people to take action. Our job is very different now. Our job is much more 
about building relationships and facilitating conversations. So that's the first thing that I think is really, really important. And, and these conversations are happening almost exclusively online. And this is occurring in both B2B and B2C environments. But there's a, a, a huge shift in expectations for, for consumers and they expect an entirely seamless experience. So they expect to be able to, you know, jump from your website to a social channel to perhaps calling your call center and have continuity in that experience. So that's a, that's a really important point. The other thing that I think is important for us to recognize is that this group of stakeholders is very different. Once upon a time, our job as marketers was to communicate and sell a product to a prospective buyer. And that's not the case anymore. What, what we see now is that we have to connect with and appeal to a much broader and more diverse group of stakeholders. That's both internal stakeholders, external stakeholders, prospective customers, influencers. And so, so our job is, is very much about, about facilitating all of those conversations because as we know, consumers today are media, right? We are, you are, a, you are your own media. So it's not just about pushing that one way communication. We don't control all of that environment. We're truly co-creating brands and, and conversation. Now those different stakeholders have, have different perspectives. So the same message can't necessarily be delivered to each of those and, and be effective. So what does one need to do to reach those different stakeholders, but get the right message to them in language and perspective that means something to them? Mm -hmm. And that is, again, part of the challenge and part of the expectation. There is, there is um, an expectation of transparency that has never existed before. I would call it radical transparency. And, uh, you know, because we're speaking with employees, with stakeholders, with influencers, and yes, they're all motivated by slightly different things, we have to be crystal clear on our position. We have to be crystal clear on our message. And we have to be crystal clear on how to engage that each of those audiences without changing our message, right? Because you will get caught out on that. It's a, you can't, you, you have to be consistent. So that's why I call this, this, this um, challenge of radical transparency and being empathetic and understanding each of the perspectives of each of the stakeholder groups is important, but, but you do need to have consistency as well. Now, when, when a client first comes to you and when they work with you for the first time, they may come with a, an objective, a goal. They, they want to get a certain market share or increase in, in revenue. My guess is that's probably not the first discussion you really want to have with them. What is typically the first discussion that they need to have with you before we can get to the market share and the revenue generation? Yeah. Yeah. You know, everybody wants to grow, right? Everybody wants to grow. Everybody wants sales. But where I always encourage us to start is, you know, what are the problems we are trying to solve? Let's just step back. Let's strip this back and understand what are the real problems and uh, roadblocks that are in the way of us getting where we want to get to. That's a and, question. And often, sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. often it comes down to getting really sharp. This is what I often see is, is hasn't happened with, with companies is they haven't gotten really sharp on their value proposition. And when I say value proposition, I mean, what is the problem we are solving for, uh, for our audience? And what is, how, what is the unmet need that we are, that we are addressing? And then building a strong positioning around that. So that is often a, an often overlooked, but critically important starting place. You mentioned the importance of content uh, and, and especially in the digital marketing world content, you know, you know, the phrase you hear content is king. Uh, maybe it's queen. I, I don't know. But what kind of content is most relevant and, and, and 
what mistakes do you find companies making when it comes to their content strategy? Well, content is a, is a big word, right? It can mean many, many different things and it can serve many, many different purposes. It can, you can create content to help right, you know, at, at the point of purchase to help somebody make a decision and choose your product. You can shoot, create content to educate people. You can create content to help people understand solutions. But I think what I, I would, um, like to talk about is because of who your audience is, is the opportunity to, to develop content from a thought leadership perspective. Executive leaders have an opportunity like never before to step into what we call thought leadership. And you know, we, we tra we're talking about all of these social channels that exist, the expectation of transparency, all of these stakeholder groups who uh, you, you, need, you need to reach. Thought leadership and, and sharing uh, content on those channels is a great way to engage all of these stakeholders. And, and you know, the absence of communication is a communication of itself. And, and I, I see it as a, a gap, but also a huge opportunity for thought leaders and, or for executives. When I say thought leadership, it's not about just talking about what we do. It really is going beyond the products and the services that we sell and really providing perspectives and points of view on big challenges that your target audience is trying to solve, sharing the why of what you do. You know, we've all heard Simon Sinek talk about why, right? We don't know, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. But thought leadership is a great opportunity to do that. Share the why, share the vision, share the aspirations, share what you're trying to achieve beyond the contribution you're trying to make beyond the products and the services that you sell. And I, you know, I just, I just think there's such a tremendous opportunity for executive leaders to do more of that. And we know, right. That if, if, if we create that clarity of purpose, that customers have greater affinity to you and your brand and they're more loyal and employees are also more loyal. I think some of the stats suggest that employees who are um, part of, of strong purpose-led organizations are more than five times more likely to, to remain. So there's, there's a strong rationale for doing this and it's not just about, it's not just a nice to have anymore. It really is an important part of creating that purchase consideration of building loyalty among your customers and among your employees. And it is, it is becoming quickly becoming an expectation. Thought leadership. Now that's probably something that a lot of company leaders, CEOs and presidents didn't think they signed up for. <laughs> right. It can be very uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and can you give us an example of, of an organization or a leader who you've seen demonstrate outstanding thought leadership? Yeah. Let, let me think about that. I think that it happens um, on many, many, in many levels, right? There are large multinational brands like Unilever and uh, Nike who are stepping into stepping into this. So for example, you know, Nike's all about social justice, Unilever's taking on the war on plastics, but at a, at a different level, you know, a, a mutual friend of ours, uh, John Wilson, has done an amazing job of stepping into this concept of thought leadership and sharing uh, on social channels, his perspective, his point of view, adding value and engaging his various constituents. Now, now for, for leaders who would like to explore the idea of thought leadership, but they're struggling with it, what can you suggest or offer for them? Well, it starts with all of this must has to be 
authentic, right? So it starts with having that clarity, clarity of purpose, clarity of vision, of values, and of what your organization is trying to achieve beyond the products and services it sells. So that, you know, it starts, it starts with that. That's the easy part. The reality is, doesn't sound like it's easy, but it is easy. Uh, thought leadership and, and as you would have experienced yourself and I experience managing all of these social channels and managing the conversations and making sure that you put out a message that is on point and has the right you know meaning and the right tone can be very, very challenging. So finding a way to deliver a program consistently is, is really important. And that's a lot of the work that we are doing now with, with thought leaders is, is helping them find ways to deliver a consistent thought leadership program without so much work involved. And so that, that means, uh, so you have a program, I believe, called Thoughtify that helps, helps leaders get their message their 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 display and convey their thought leadership with the means of, of of digital media through social media and such yeah yeah and thoughtify is just uh really a service to try and make this thought leadership work easy or than it than it otherwise would be we we i you know for for leaders who are uh, of the mindset they want that they want to get out and that they want to share the their perspectives and points of view thoughtify can really help facilitate some of take some of the heavy lifting off of off of their back so that they have a regular uh, cadence of of content to share what what are the mistakes that you've noticed leaders making when they first try to demonstrate some sort of thought leadership or they think, well, oh, I can do this for a while. Let's, let's just give it a try here. What mm -hmm. mistakes do, do you find them making? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, there's, there's a couple of watch outs. I think that the first one is people are overly ambitious and, and jump in with both feet and decide that they can create a thought leadership program on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, and, and, you know, be posting regularly. I, you know, I, I would say, pull it back. Think about what is, what is the channel that is most important to you and your various stakeholder groups and do a really good job at, at one channel to start with. And you don't have to, you don't have to be on every channel. You don't have to be on every network. You, you make decisions based on what what works for uh, for you and and for your business? So that that would be the first thing. The second thing that I would would do is um, uh, the second watch out is to get a balance of original content and then shared content. Uh, yeah, we often see one of two things happening: people either only sharing other people's content because sharing is easy, right, uh, and never creating their own content and having their own point of view or not doing anything because they think they can only share their own content. And then that becomes a very heavy lift. So finding the, the, the right balance of that is important. The balance is important because of? Because they're, because of what I said earlier on, we need to win at the internet every day. So we don't want to be, we don't want to go dark for months at a time, but we also don't want to be sharing things that aren't of value. So finding the right cadence and the right balance of here's my original thought blended with here, here's a perspective that someone else had that I agree with that I can, you know, build on is, is important. You stressed earlier the importance that or the description that you're not just a digital marketing agency you are a creative digital marketing agency let's talk about the creative now my guess is that a lot of people out there have a misconception about what the creative means uh, some people think well i'm just not creative uh, or they think that creative is well let's just go sit in a room and throw around crazy ideas and maybe something will stick against the wall but what is the pro it, i'm assuming it's a process because if you do it repeatedly it needs to be a process what is the process that works best for you when it comes in your firm when it comes to being creative Mm -hmm. Well, again, at the, 
at the heart of good creative always is a rich human insight, right? An understanding of uh, an insight around um, what motivates or um, what compels your audience. So in order to achieve that, it starts with, with research. Now there's lots of different ways to do research today, right? It's not just about the, the way that we used to go out and do large scale research. You can do, you can listen on social channels. You can, can do surveys online. You can do quick interviews. There's many, many ways to gather that insight, but you do need to have a unique insight. That's, that's what drives great creative. A unique insight that comes from understanding the perspectives and then and then twisting it, looking at it a different way. Understanding the 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 perspectives and motivations or pain points. Pain points is really important of of your audience. Okay, so this is where your your ergonomics training comes in, understanding <laughs> where their pain is. <laughs> Hopefully it's not physical pain, but sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. That you mentioned that the firm, uh, Jan Kelly, has been around since 1913. That's a long time for, for any company to survive, especially in the service business. I imagine that the company has gone through some major changes over, over that. Wow, that's more, um, that's more than 100 years. I just did the math. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do it earlier. Uh, more than 100 years, uh, it's gone through some major changes. And imagine that the firm has gone through some major, uh, major change even j more recently with the, the, the digital marketing coming on and, and then the pandemic. What do you see as perhaps the next big change for Jan Kelly and, and maybe creative digital marketing? One of the things that we have learned over the last few years is that core to our success and sustainability and longevity is continuous reinvention. You don't exist for over a hundred years in, in any business, but certainly not in marketing communication without continuously reinventing ourselves. So we see that we see continuous reinvention as, as a core part of uh, what will help us continue to survive and thrive into the future. And as it relates to the last number of months, there has been Digital adoption and digital transformation across the board has been tremendously accelerated. So as we work through this pandemic and as we get out on the other side of it, I think that we will have a new level of expectations as it relates to the digital customer experience. And so we really see that that's what the next few months and years will be focused on is creating that next level digital customer experience or that true omni-channel customer experience. Because it's one thing to be digital by necessity and to be going online and buying your groceries and buying your clothes and ordering your dinner through a clunky interface because you have no other choice. But as we, can, as we come out on the other side of this, we'll be digital by choice again. So our, that there'll be a new standard set for consumer expectations as it relates to that experience. So I think there's tons of opportunity there. Tons of opportunity coming and the importance of uh, continuous reinvention, a positive note to wrap up on. My guest today is uh, Chantal Broton, helping you with radical transparency. If you like what you heard, Remember to like, comment, and share this podcast. Come back every week for more practical insights to help you deliver your intended message. I'm your host, George Torok.